Hey guys, welcome back to my now existing channel. I'm so excited to be able to even film this video because I've dreamt of making a video like this for a long time, basically. I mean, I watch a lot of book videos. Hailey Pham is my go-to person to go see books. I think the first book video I came across was a Christian one and it was like a Christian book recommendations. And after I saw that one, I literally went to her whole vlogging channel. So she's currently the only book person that I watch, but I do watch a lot of book talk videos. I mean, there's random ones that pop up in my page that I watch, but I don't know by name as you're reading by this video i'm going to be giving you my favorite christian romance book recommendations and i'm actually giving you guys good ones like i'm very picky it's so rare to find a really good christian romance book because they're all so very cliche it's usually bad boy innocent girl type vibes and the girl usually changes him these books that i have here is actually not it's cliche but cliche in a way that it's not cringy it's cliche in a very cute way so what i look for in books I usually look for little to no spice and I look for more intimate and thoughtful connections They don't have to be already friends in the beginning. They could hate each other. They could be enemies to lovers I don't care what trope it is But if it doesn't develop into an intimate relationship where you guys actually know each other and talk and have these deep conversations Then I don't want it. You're just gonna be lustful the whole time and not even get to know each other I don't want to know the book. I'm gonna start with the series first. So the series that I'm reading is the Hope Springs series. Valerie M. Bodden, I'm hoping I'm saying her name right. She's a wonderful author. I really love the way she writes her books. It's very detail oriented, which I love. It helps me understand the background of each character and really helps me understand their thought process, everything about them, just really get to know them on a deeper level. Every single book is different with new characters, but they all connect at the end. They're all friends in the end. You'll be reading the book and you won't even know that it's part of a series. That's how good it is. The characters from the previous books are helping and supporting the main characters in every way that they can. I'm going to tell you the ones that I read. It's not in order. I read book number three, which is Not Until You. Might be one of my favorites and was my favorites for the longest. But now I think another book took that role. I've only read three of the series so far of the nine books. Five out of five stars. So I'm going to give you a little background about it. Violet is the main character. Violet is dealing with the grief of her husband passing while managing her antique store, which brings a lot of stress to her. So right now she's not looking for relationships. I mean, why would she? She's trying to go through life right now and it's already hard for her. So then the guy comes in the picture and that guy is Nate and he's the new man next door. He starts to help her with her store. And so, you know, feelings start to form for one another. Something that I really love about this book is how it really brings into the light every single detail, every single aspect that these characters are going through. It just helps you connect to her as well as the guy Nate. Like it really shows you his life, what is going on, what happened to the both of them before they met each other. It explains everything you need to know to understand these two characters before you understand them together, if that makes sense. There's a secret that Nate is keeping and so it adds suspense, intensity, it's very intimate it's very sweet, has all the emotions. I remember reading it and I couldn't put it down. So if you want to get back into reading a Christian book, this is the book to go because this book really helps me really fall in love with Christian romance books again. So the second book of the series that I love and is my current favorite right now is Not Until Christmas Morning, which is book number five of the Hope Springs collection. <sighs> I love that book. I love it so much. This book, Not Until Christmas Morning, is the Christian Purple Hearts version. <laughs> Except it doesn't really get too political. It's mostly dealing with someone who is disabled. He has an amputated leg. He fought in the war in Afghanistan and he has experienced a lot that has caused him immense trauma. He moves in close to this girl named Leah and Leah is actually fostering a kid, a rebellious kid named Jackson who does not want to listen to her foster mom but Leia is Christian so one of her core values of being Christian is to have patience to not give up give love to be forgiving and she shows it with these two characters with Jackson and also Austin so it's like two wonderful stories interconnecting Austin and then we have Leia and Jackson you should definitely read it for yourself I hope that I kind of give you a picture I give it a five out of five stars the third book I recommend that is part of the series 
is Not Until Forever, which is book number seven. The main character, the girl, her name is Grace, and she's planning to build this bed and breakfast. She really wants and has an amazing picture for this place. God has called her to do something wonderful with this place because of her grandfather. What she did not expect was to meet a retired NFL player. Levi is an NFL star and so he took a pause from his career because of this injury. Levi's dad works for a construction company. He decides to help his dad and guess what? Levi ends up helping Grace's bed and breakfast. Grace is not even looking for a relationship right now. She doesn't even accept his help. I give this book a four to five stars just because Levi and Grace were very closed off. They didn't really talk about their feelings. And I don't like that. If only if there was a little bit more communication, I would have given it a five out of five. But since Grace decided to play hard to get, I do remember this book being sweet and funny though. I will say that, definitely. But if you like hard to get type tropes, I think you'll enjoy this one very much. All right, enough with that Hope Springs series. We're gonna go into two separate books that are not a part of a series. Well, at least that's what I think. Book number four is The Masterpiece by Francine Rivers. Francine Rivers is someone that I love. I love the way she writes her books. She was the first Christian author that I read after reading A Walk to Remember a long time ago. She's the one that actually got me started into reading Christian romance books again. I didn't really like Redeeming Love. I think it was too explicit for me. If I don't like spice, then I'm not going to like the book, unfortunately. But I think that's how come like non-Christian readers really enjoy that book. <laughs> Not me though. It's okay, it's okay. Everyone's different. Everyone has different likes and dislikes. The Masterpiece by Francine Rivers. It's not like redeeming love at all. It's hard to forget a book. I don't remember the details, but I remember how I felt, if that makes sense. I think I literally cried in that book and I was in shock. I do remember that there was this guy. He's a painter and he does a lot of street painting graffiti. And he goes by this anonymous name. So he's living two different lives. He's living his Hannah Montana life. He has a mansion. He's rich. The main character, the woman, I keep calling them girls because I'm still a kid at heart. She just got out of a horrible relationship. She doesn't have a husband, if I'm correct. She's a mom. She doesn't have a job. She's looking for a job. So this artist is looking for someone to clean his house. I really enjoyed reading that book. It makes me feel like I'm a part of the book. And I'm just literally that person watching in the side like eating popcorn. That's how I felt reading the book. I think you're noticing a repetition here about my likings. <laughs> I enjoy books that deal with some type of issue. I like reading imperfect people as characters. I think that's every single book. I think the thing is with young romance, the problems that young people have compared to adults is different. Young people think about love in a different way than adults. And so young people are either insecure themselves or dealing with their own internal problems. Adults who deal with problems outside of their control. Of course, they deal with problems within themselves too, but the problems are a little bit more extended, I would say. I don't want to diminuate anyone's feelings. I feel like young people can also struggle as much as adults. I'm just speaking in a stereotypical way. It's rare to see something different. The last book, The Healer's Apprentice by Melanie Dickerson. I just found out that it's part of a series. It's a Christian author who writes Christian romances based off of the old princesses tales. I read a book that was supposed to be a spin-off of Sleeping Beauty. I mean, how did I not even get that? I do remember it being kind of funny. This one is not so detailed. It's as if you were watching a movie, kind of like another Cinderella story. So you understand the essence that it's a fairy tale, but it's different. I think I give that book a four out of five. It's kind of like a Bridgerton vibe where it mentions things going outside of the romance and I kind of like reading books that just talks about the world of the romance. I only like when they mention it when it's important and it has something to do with the plot of the romance. Those are my five book recommendations for you guys. I hope you enjoy the read. Thank you guys anyways for watching. I'll see you guys next time.